Now for those of you who have been looking at the news, it has been reported that there's over 500,000 persons infected with COVID-19, the coronavirus. Uh, this virus started in Wuhan, China of December 2019. It has since spread right across the world. <coughs> Sorry, that's not corona, but coughing and sneezing are just some of the ways that the virus can spread or even on surfaces as well. And because of this, travel is on hold, physical distancing is encouraged, and guess what? No more hugs, no more handshakes. And there's a reason for that. The reason is simply this. If you catch it, you can spread it because you have it and you're taking it with you. But could you imagine this? Stop and think for a while. What would it look like if your friends and family, co-workers, church, or nation, catch it, spread it, because they have it? What would that look like? You see, I'm not talking about a COVID-19 pandemic. I'm talking about a pandemic that has been around for centuries, one that has made a huge difference. You see, we've had pandemics in our time. There's a Black Death, there's a Spanish flu, and these pandemics have really been bad because they've killed millions of people. Millions. But I'm talking about this one pandemic, which is good. Yes, this one pandemic, it is good. In fact, this pandemic has saved millions of lives. This pandemic has gave life. This pandemic has restored life. This pandemic has turned the minds and hearts of many around. Rather than death and destruction, this pandemic has brought about transformation. In fact, this pandemic is so powerful, it has spread like a wildfire across the nations changing social and political systems. And by now, some of you are on to it. I'm talking about the gospel pandemic. You see, this pandemic started in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And Jesus, before he ascended into heaven, he said to his disciples, I'm going to give you a supernatural power. I'm going to send back one, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, and you're going to be my witnesses. You're going to be my disciples. You're going to share this message in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. And today, we have become recipients of that. They spread it because they got it. And today, I want to jump into Acts chapter 17. I want to share with you two things that Paul wants to show us. Because once we get it, we can spread it and the world can change. So I want you to head on over to Acts chapter 17. I'm going to be reading from verses 1 to verses 15. So the first point I want you to make, take it with you. What are you going to take? Your faith in Christ wherever you go. We can see that in verse 1 when Paul and Silas got to Thessalonica. It was a thriving city. The first thing that Paul and Silas did was they were headed straight for the synagogue. Now the synagogue was like a meeting place. It was like a church. And so Paul is going to this meeting place, so this type of church, because he has some Jewish brothers there, because Paul was a Jew himself. In fact, in Romans 1 verse 16, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because it is the power of God unto salvation, first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. So you know what Paul was saying? Paul was saying, hey, I am going to take this message to my Jewish brothers. But if my Jewish brothers reject me, then I have my Gentile brothers that I can take the message of the gospel to. And that's one of the things that I love about Paul. He was consistent in sharing this message. If you look in verse 1 in God's word, it says, As was the custom of Paul. Which means that Paul had a habit of talking about Jesus, about sharing his faith wherever he went. If you look in verse 17 of chapter 17, it says that Paul went to the marketplace. Well, what was Paul doing in the marketplace? Well, 
You guessed it right. Paul was engaging people in the marketplace. In Acts 19 verse 8, Paul went into the synagogue. What was Paul doing in the synagogue? Paul was engaging people in the synagogue. He was taking it with him wherever he go. He was spreading something that had a positive impact on the lives of the people. And so you and I, we got to take our faith in Christ wherever we go and we have to be consistent. You see, Paul went into the synagogue on three Sabbath days. That is three weeks. So he was consistent. There were two things that helped Paul to be consistent. You see, Paul had a burden for people and he had a zeal. He wanted to see them get saved and to rejoice in Jesus Christ. And here's the thing. Do you have a burden for people? I can ask myself that question. Do I have a burden for people? Because you see, when you have a burden for people, you understand where they're at. When you have a burden for people, you want to see them get saved because you understand their situation. There are a lot of people out there with good degrees and a good family and a good job, but they're hurting on the inside. They're lonely. They're depressed because there is no, no hope. There's no salvation. There's no joy. And only Jesus Christ can fill that emptiness in their lives. And how is he going to do that? When you begin to tell him the good news of Jesus Christ and how he has moved you from darkness into his marvelous life. So we have to have a burden for people and a zeal to see these people who were once liars and deceivers and fornicators and adulterers now lifting their hands and praising God and glorifying him. Why? Because you took your faith in Christ. And you shared it with them. Consistency, a burden, and a zeal. But notice also that the synagogue was Paul's platform. The marketplace was Paul's platform. And I want to ask us, what is your platform? What is my platform? Because the platform that we have is the opportunity to share, is the opportunity to spread. If we want to see a gospel pandemic, use the platform that God has given to you and let people know about your faith in Christ wherever you go. I know some people say, you know, well, right now I ain't got nowhere to go because I'm on a lockdown. <laughs> Can I say to you that there are so many avenues that we can talk about Christ? There's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's Instagram, there's WhatsApp, there's TikTok, there's Snapchat. Like, we have tons of opportunities. And if you're not into social media, you have a phone, you can call a friend or you can send an email. We have opportunities to share our faith in Christ with those that we come into contact with. You have to take it with you. Because you know what? People are waiting to hear how you came to faith in Jesus Christ. So ask God, God give me a burden. God give me a zeal. Help me to be consistent. When these things become a part of your life, you can take it with you wherever you go. This is how you take it with you. You take your faith in Christ wherever you go. And wherever you go, you open up the Bible. Now, you may not have a hard copy, but you may have a digital copy or you may have the Word of God in your heart. Like, take that with you. But I want you to notice how Paul unpacks the Scriptures for them. First of all, uh, Paul begins to explain to them. So he went in depth. Right? He begins to reason with them, meaning there was a dialogue. And I believe that they had some questions that they wanted to ask Paul. So there was like a Q&A session that was taking place. And so Paul recognized that it was important to take the time to explain the scriptures. Now, he's going to use Old Testament scriptures because the Jews were familiar with the Old Testament. And so Paul is building a case and saying, you guys have the Old Testament scriptures. What I'm going to prove to you, right? I'm going to prove to you by opening the scriptures that Jesus Christ came, died, and rose again. And so he opened up to Isaiah 53 and it talks about Jesus Christ uh, coming to earth and that he would suffer, he would die. Psalms 22 spoke of his death and when Jesus was on the cross, he cried, oh my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then in Psalm 16, it speaks of his resurrection. 
But notice, Paul is still in the Old Testament unpacking the scriptures. And you know what he's doing? He's bringing clarity to the message. And Paul went in as was his custom. And on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and rise from the dead and saying, this Jesus whom I proclaim to you is the Christ. When you open the Bible, ensure that the message is clear. What is the message of the gospel? The message of the gospel is that we're all sinners. Romans 3 says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, which means from birth we're all sinful. That's important in the gospel. A lot of people, they shock at the gospel because they don't want to talk about sin. But the gospel includes sin because Christ forgives us of sin. God himself hates sin. He has to punish sin. Sin is what separated Adam and Eve in the garden. And so Jesus comes to earth on a rescue mission to reconcile us back to God. The only way we can escape God's judgment and wrath is by confession and repentance, a change in behavior, a change in thinking, and trusting in Jesus' work on the cross and his resurrection power to keep us. That's the power of the gospel. We don't complicate it. We make it simple enough and allow the Spirit of God to work on the hearts of men and women. So you open up the Word of God wherever you go and you point people to the scriptures so be clear with the message and watch this when you're clear with the message you leave the results to god if you look in verse 4 it says that some of the jews believe along with some of the greek women that's the power of the gospel this is why i love john 6 44 it says no man can come to the father unless the spirit of god draws them in Acts chapter 16, it says, And the Lord opened Lydia's heart so that she can receive the word of God. What a joy it is to see Greeks and Jews being transformed. And there were some people there, they didn't like it at all. So you know what? Some of the angry Jews said, this ain't right. So we're going to send for some guys from the marketplace. They run up some bad boys on the block. And they went after Jason. And they knock on Jason's door. Bah, 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 bah. Jason, open up. We're here. We're here. And Jason came out probably like Jason probably. Yeah. Oh, help me. <laughs> and it was like, we are here and we want Paul. What's wrong? So they brought Jason before the city officials. And they said, these men are creating problems. These men are turning our world upside down. They are talking about another king, Jesus, instead of talking about Caesar. And so they order uh, Jason to pay some money and then let him go. But very interestingly, I want you to watch what happened. When you and I open up God's word, expect contention. There are going to be people who don't like the message of the gospel. But that's okay because God has a way of working things out for our good and for his pleasure. The church in Acts has always faced persecution and the more persecution, the more the message spread. It's a gospel pandemic. So here's the beauty about this. They came to the city officials and this is what they were saying. These men, they are turning our world upside down. Wow. Well, could I say to you that our world has been upside down since Genesis chapter 3, the fall of Adam and Eve. But the gospel, when you and I are sharing how we came to faith in Christ, the world is now right side up. Because guess what? The word is proclaimed and the world is changed. I I'm going to say that again. Somebody put that in the comment section. The word is proclaimed and the world is is change and so where is paul paul is off to berea why because he has something he wants to spread he has something that is valuable he has something that is precious you know a woman's handbag 
is precious. A woman has a lot of stuff in her handbag. And as a matter of fact, she has a whole living room in her handbag because there's precious stuff in there. You don't mess with a woman's handbag, right? Because it's valuable. Well, just think about what Paul has. Paul has something more valuable than what's in a woman's handbag. He has the power of the gospel and nothing is going to stop the Apostle Paul from sharing it. Nothing should stop you and I from sharing this message wherever we go and opening up the Word of God and seeing God do a miraculous work in people's hearts. And so he goes to Berea. Hallelujah. He goes to Berea and he gets there and he opens God's Word. Notice the difference with the Berean Jews and the Thessalonian Jews. It says that the Bereans were more noble. In other words, they were more receptive to the gospel. They examined the scriptures, they studied it for themselves, they scrutinized it, they opened God's word and they held it up in front of them like a mirror and they said, God, this word is for me. God, let this word search me. God, let this word change me. This is the type of people the Bereans were. They didn't just take Paul's word no, they didn't take Paul's word. They examined every single thing. You see, the Bereans were not like some modern day Christians because they come to church and they just figure like a Sunday morning message is a good booster for them. No, the Bereans were like that Sunday, but I'm going to get into the word on Monday. I'm going to get into the word on Tuesday. I'm going to get into the word on Wednesday. You know? The Bereans were like, oh, that word is for me and not for the sister and not for the brother. Because some people like that when the pastor preach, amen, pastor. I hope they hear that. It's amen, that's for him. But the Bereans were, no, this word is for me. When the word is open, it is for me. And because the word is for me, I'm going to take it. And when it transforms me, I'm going to share it with other people. That was the power of the gospel at work in the lives of the Bereans. They weren't stuck up on their tradition. And one of the things that I read was very interesting. It says that when the Bereans approach the scripture, they approach it with an open mind to unlearn some things that they would have learned and to embrace the truth of God's word. That's powerful. That should be the attitude of every single believer. Hey, don't take my word for it. Search the scriptures after this broadcast. Go into the word of God in Acts chapter 17 and say, God, what is it that you have here for me? Reveal to me, show to me from your word, God, how you can change me so that I can take this message and change others. When God's word is open, it becomes a mirror that changes our entire perspective. Earlier this year, in January, one of the things that I prayed and asked God for is God that you'd search me in Psalm 139. And I prayed that prayer, I said, God, search me, God, reveal things to me. In a couple of weeks, you know, we're going along fine, nothing. Until, until this time, until this lockdown, God begins to reveal some things to me during the past weeks. God begins to reveal some pride issues. God begins to reveal uh, selfishness. God begins to reveal how I'm impatient. God begins to reveal how I'm complaining and murmuring. And so as God begins to reveal these things, I begin to take stock of them and open the scriptures and say, God, thank you. Thank you for revealing these things to my heart and changing my perspective. And when it is open like a mirror, it reveals all the spiritual deficiencies in my heart. Oftentimes we think the gospel is for the unsaved or the unchurched. Yes, to bring them to Christ, but the gospel is for every single believer because it is a continuous work of grace. It is a continuous work of the Holy Spirit on our hearts, confirming us more and more into the image of God. This is why a Christian can say, you know, three years ago, I struggled with anger. But here's the good news. Because of Jesus Christ, I am more patient. This is why a Christian can say, I used to struggle with lust. But because of the power of Jesus Christ, I am pure in my heart. I'm reading the Word of God. Because why? The gospel makes the difference in your life and in my life. Maybe you're watching right now, but this is an opportunity for you to make things right with God.
maybe you're going through a tough time in this pandemic and this is an opportunity to surrender your heart to God cry out to God and ask him to forgive you and to change you and God would definitely do that and maybe you're a believer you're a believer you're listening to me but you know what you haven't been using your platform to advance the message to spread it and to share it maybe you've kept your faith private because you don't want anybody at your workplace or anywhere to know that you're a believer and maybe you've not opened God's Word and say God I'm opening your word and let this word teach me let this word speak to me let this word convict me maybe you haven't done that maybe you haven't even opened the word and share it with someone if you ask yourself that when was the last time you opened god's word and share it with a family member when was the last time you opened god's word and share it with a co-worker when was the last time you opened god's word and share it with your best friend and i'm encouraging you right now to take a moment and to do some deep reflection Take it with you, spread it, share it. This week, take your faith in Christ and go anywhere and everywhere, whatever platform you want to use. Open God's word and let the Spirit speak and lead and guide. I want to give you a challenge this week. I want you to write up the names of all the loved ones on a piece of paper and I want you to pray over them and reach out to them during this week. It's the second thing that I want you to do to grab your phone this week and share two minutes of how you came to faith in Jesus Christ because here's what will happen you never know you never know if somebody in Germany if somebody in Canada if somebody in Jamaica if somebody in Belize if somebody in Guyana would be able to hear your testimony your story and come to faith in Jesus Christ I wonder what would that look like if for two minutes you share your testimony and your story and you open God's word and say, God, speak to me so that I can speak to others. I want to encourage you, church. Take it with you. God is unstoppable. Our church is unstoppable. Take it with you. Somebody put in the comment section, I'm taking it with me. Somebody put that in the comment section right now. I'm taking this message of the gospel with me. I'm taking it with me. I'm putting my feet on display. I'm running with the message of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise God. Let me pray. Let me pray. Let me pray for those who are watching who have not trusted in Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for that young man. I pray for that young woman. I pray for that person who's looking right now at the screen. They have not trusted in you as Lord and Savior. And I speak life into them, God. I pray that you remove the scales from their eyes and that they will trust in Jesus Christ, the precious Son of the living God, that they would surrender completely to Jesus Christ, that they would give their hearts over to you, Lord. Work on them, Lord God. Speak to them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for your church. I pray for your believers that we would be an unstoppable church, dear God that the gospel pandemic would spread because we've put our faith in Christ and wherever we go, we're talking about Christ. We're opening the word, Lord. Let this be said of your church and your people. In Jesus' name, amen. And hey guys, if this entire service has been a blessing to you, I want to encourage you to share it with someone. And you can leave a comment on our uh, Facebook page or you can contact us at 333-2009 or we have an email address, it's on the screen, hbctcinfo at gmail.com. God bless you. And you know what we always say at church, right? You are loved. Have a great day, guys. Take care.